Hi everyone, I am here with some friends. My name is Mr. Hal and we are going to play a game called Wander Home today. Hey friends, I'm Miss Shelley. I have never played this game or anything like it. I'm kind of excited to give it a try. Hi everybody, my name is Miss Jenny and I'm really excited to be a skunk today. Woo! So today we are going to embark on a new journey together through the pastoral fantasy tabletop role playing game Wander Home by J Dragon. Tabletop role playing is a form of collaborative storytelling. In Wander Home, we will be playing animal folk traveling through Haith, a beautiful and boundless land composed of small communities separated by vast stretches of wilderness. Together, we'll give voice to our characters, the other folk that we encounter along the way, and the wonder of the land around us. I love Wander Home because it's not hung up on complicated rules or mechanics. You can jump in to play without hours of preparation. And that's what we're gonna show you how to do. If you'd like to start your own game, you can check out Wander Home at the Oak Park Public Library in one of our tabletop role-playing discovery kits. It comes with the guidebook for Wander Home that is written by Jay Dragon and also more tools to help you get started playing. Shall we set forth? To guide our journey, we are going to be using the quick start steps that you'll find on page 34 of Wander Home. We will walk through each step to model how you can start your own game. So let's get started with our supplies. We have a copy of Wander Home, which we'll be referencing along the way. And we'll also have tokens. And these, these tokens that, um, these are the tokens that come with the Wander Home uh, kit at the library. Um, but you can use any small object to represent tokens. You can even keep track of tokens with pencil and paper, which are the other supplies that we're gonna have as we play because we may want to record our journey with words or pictures as we go along. The next step is to read the opening paragraphs. If you've never played Wander Home before and you're not familiar with the land of Haith, you'll want to read the opening paragraphs of the book together. On page six, you'll find the introduction. Seven and eight describe a little bit about the Haith land, and page nine shares more about journeys with Wander Home. So step three is to cover the tools that we have available to us on the journey. And this is an important one. As Jay Dragon explains, we're going to be talking a lot as we journey. This conversation may be about the paths that we wish to take or the things that we want to do. Sometimes we may describe our characters, their actions or the world as it flutters by around us. As we often do not know where we are going, it is vital that we care for each other along this path, along this journey. Our journeying tools are ways to facilitate this conversation and to show compassion and care for one another. So we're each gonna share a couple of the journeying tools that we have. One of those to begin is let's do this instead. So, any time during our journey, if we want to take a different direction, maybe we're heading toward a swamp and we're just not feeling like a swamp is the right choice for us today. So we could say, let's go to the garden instead. We could also say, do we want to? And that's a great way to ask the others playing with us uh, when we're about to head into uncharted territory is to constantly be asking, do we want to do this together? Do we want to go into the swamps where it might be dark and dangerous? Where to next? Because once you start a journey, you're going to keep going. So once we discover and explore one area, where are we going to go next? It's a great way to give everyone in your party a chance to discover what the next step is. Two, what do you think? This is so important. This is a way to check in with your group too and as Hal mentioned, really care for them. Um, to, to take a minute to pause and see how they're feeling, how they're thinking. Um, and it might, it might end up changing the direction that you decide to go. So this 
one is an important one because it is called hold on. Sometimes you just need to stop. You need to take a break. Maybe you need a bathroom break. Maybe you want to go back to a previous scene because you thought of something else that you want to do. Or sometimes you may want to talk with the group because something isn't feeling comfortable to you. Or maybe you guys have backed yourselves into a little bit of a storytelling wall and you're like, nope, I think we need to, we need to figure out a different way than what we are doing. And all of those are great. And also very important, sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away. Maybe this isn't the game for you right now, or um, maybe talking things through didn't help you make, didn't help you feel better. And so you can just say, I'm gonna leave for right now and maybe I will come back next time. And these tools will get us started, but there's lots of other tools that you can use. On page 14 of Wander Home, you'll find more suggestions that you can put into practice in your game. Step four, it is time to start discussing the journeying questions. So these will help us set our expectations for the kind of game that we're going to play together. So the first question is, how long are we expecting this journey to last? If we have any expectations at all? I do not have any expectations. Me neither. Just not like forever. We're just here to get started and see where the adventure takes us. The next question is, do we want a more upbeat journey or a world that lingers more heavily on trauma and recovery? My preference is for upbeat. There's a lot of things going on already in the world that are hard to handle and I would like something a little more cheerful to play with. I love an uh, upbeat journey. Same. I agree with both of you. An upbeat journey sounds like a wonderful little like respite right now. So. Do we want a more personal journey focused on mundane issues and quandaries, or do we want a more tangled journey filled with mysterious and magical forces? Magic. I like both of them, so I am definitely up for some magic. Bring it on. We can have, we can have magic and mysteries, but we can have ones that are more upbeat and less, less um, dark forces. Yes. And maybe, maybe more whimsy in our magic. So the next question is, do we want a single person to act as a guide, multiple rotating guides, or no guides at all? Um, and for this, this particular game, we're going to play as though we have no guide at all, which means that we're just going to be collaborating, building this story together. Um, at any point, though, someone might step up and take, take the lead on a particular journey but we'll all be a part of it, voicing the world around us and, and the characters who are there with us. And then our last question is, is there anything else that might come up that we wanna watch out for? We can for? talk about it if something does. That sounds great. Okay, so now it's time to talk about playbooks and tokens. So like I shared earlier, Wander Home doesn't have a lot of complicated rules or mechanics. It's also not a game that's focused on the stakes of success or failure. However, it does provide us with guidelines to help facilitate our play. Playbooks are how we build our characters. There are 15 playbooks provided in the Wander Home book. They are found on page 47 through 107. And each playbook comes with a description, unique prompts, a list of things that you can always do, and questions to ask the table in order to establish a relationship between your characters. If you're going to be playing an extended adventure, each book also comes with a list of special things that you can do when you reach a holiday in your story. Tokens are a tool that you'll use throughout the game together. It will help establish a rhythm within your game. To get a token, you can inconvenience yourself to help someone else. You can give away something you hold dear, pause for a moment to get some rest, leave an offering to a small or forgotten God, speak your true feelings on a subject, take a moment to bask in the grandeur of the world and describe it to the table. Take a moment to watch a tiny moment of beauty and describe that to the table. 
and take a moment to marvel at something that no one has seen it before and ask the table to describe it. But you can also spend the tokens that you receive. And some of the ways that you can spend your tokens are provide a solution for an aspect of a material or immediate problem, ease someone's pain if only for a moment, keep someone safe from the difficulties of the world, offer someone the chance to connect with you on a personal level, find what fundamentally, find so, what someone needs to give them a chance to change fundamentally, reveal something hidden about the person in front of you and ask them what it is. Know something important about the place you're in and tell the table about it. And listen to the wisdom of the many small and forgotten gods and ask the table what they tell you. Each playbook also comes with special ways that you might use tokens in your game. So it's time for us to share our playbooks. So we are going to take turns reading the descriptions, answering the prompts, and telling each other what our characters can always do. And once we have shared a little bit about our character, then we will take turns asking each other the questions that our playbooks provide. We'll each ask each other one question, and this will help us establish the relationship our characters already have with one another. I am gonna play as the caretaker. I am a lemur named Honey, and I use she, her pronouns, Honey does. Um, two things that I value being are friendly and expressive, and two things that feel exhausting to be are patient and organized. Um, my lemur is described as um, tender, supportive, and silent. I really liked how there's different look options. And so I chose a flowing dress because flowing dresses are twirly and I love things that are twirly. And also a faded shawl. I think that's very important. And um, a constant rhythmic tapping because that is just plain old fun. And my honey caretaker, the lemur, gets to choose five friends that hide in the shrines that I carry with me. And so I got to pick from a list of five. And here are my little, my little friends that hide with me. I have got Ravel, who is cheerful and is the god of yarn. Excellent sweater. And then I have got Yacht, who is relaxed and is the god of a child's first snow. Got Zenith, who is confident and is the god of a single sunbeam. Very sunshiny. And then I have a nameless ancient god who is seeking refuge. And they are feral and they fell. This is my ancient god. And the last one is actually not a god at all. It is a friendly little bug that is just going along for the ride. I can always pause, tilt my head to the side and keep going. I can play with one of my gods. You know, sometimes little bugs and gods are useful. I can say something in silence better than words can. I can notice a little friend that everyone overlooks. I can say, hold this. And I can ask, hush, can you hear that? And you get a token if you try your best to hear what I do. And that is Honey and her friends. All right. So I am a firelight. Um, and the caption for the firelight is, it is easy to get lost in the darkness and the deep. The firefly at your side will always guide the way. You are alive. Your care is forward thinking, mutual and shining bright. So I am a firelight. My name is Evangeline. My pronouns are she, her and hers. And I am a skunk because I am a nocturnal animal. And a skunk is my favorite nocturnal animal. They're so cute and misunderstood. Choose two you try to be and two you know you can't be. So two things I try to always be is I always try to be positive 
And I also try to be um, patient. And then I chose another one too. Because <laughs> Mr. Hal, you said I could kind of make my own rules at times. So I chose yeah. three and two. That's okay. You can. Okay. Um, so I, I always try to be positive. I try to be patient. And I am a strong judge of character. Um, and then there's two things that I can't always be. I cannot always be here for everyone. However, I do try to be present all of the time. Um, and I can't be consistently correct. However, I will always listen. And then, oh, my look. So I was told that I could pick three to four things to describe my look. And this was really interesting to me because I found all the things I was drawn to weren't, um, it, they were more like things to assist on the journey. I, so I'm a naked skunk um, named Evangeline. <laughs> However, I was thinking of this and this wasn't something that I was able to have, but I have a lot of things that I'm gonna be carrying with me friends. So I need a backpack or a satchel, something. Um, and I'm fast and a little scurrying thing. So I was thinking just like a little, little backpack that I could wear while I'm running to and fro would be really helpful because I'm going to be carrying a lot of things that are going to help us on our journey. <laughs> and some of those things are, I'm going to bring a well-loved fiddle because I've always wanted to know how to play a fiddle. And now I can be Evangeline this young who knows how to play a fiddle. I'm gonna bring a box of medical supplies just in case on our journey, someone has need of something if, if one of us gets hurt. Um, I'm going to be, I'm also gonna be bringing a book of small rituals. However, that's what it says in the directions. My book is a magic book. Um, so I'm gonna have a spell book. And then I'm also bringing a small and practical knife in case we need, you know, some food on our way. We want to cook something. And this is a big deal because Jenny doesn't like things that are pokey pokey. But I see, I see like why it would be smart for our group to have a small and practical knife. So I, you know, I, 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 I choose that. So those are my four things that I chose. And then this is really fun. I have a firefly as my companion um, and my firefly friend stays by my side no matter what. They sleep during the day and then they light up the way. They are luminescent so they can always help us find our way and help us see the light in the darkest times as well. Um, and I'd love to tell all of you a little bit about my firefly. So Matt the firefly and we met, well, so I have no memory of Matt and I not being together. Um, we grew up together and the, he's always been with me. Um, he's very caring. And the first memory I have of him is when he visited me in my dreams. But I, like, that's something that my parents kind of told me about after I had the dream, because I have no, like, actual recollection of it. Um, let's see. And then... The next question is, choose one light you still keep lit and one that died out long ago. Um, so one light that I still keep lit is a box of beeswax candles given by a past love. They magically refill when their light is shared with those who are lost or those who have a need of light. So they're really, really special. So it's really important that I only share them with people that have a need of the light because I don't want them to lose their magic. Um, and one of the lights that is now out is a rusted lantern that my mother carried before me. Um, and it went out when she passed away. I, well, I kind of said this already. I, I can always listen. Um, I'm, I'm a really good listener. And um, I can always light the way. So if we find ourselves in some dark spaces, I can help us find, bring some light. Oh, and I can say, do you need a hand? Because then friends will get a token if you accept my help. So I am playing the moth tender. Um, and the little description about the moth tender is carry your moths travel across the heath, bringing news, letters, and 
letters and tiny boxes. You wander the land, keeping an eye on these moths and their towers. You are alive. Your care is consistent, prompt, and arrives in small packages. So choose a name and some pro pronouns. Um, and my character's name is Edelweiss, and he uses the pronouns he, him, and his. Um, and then my animal, um, I have decided to play a weasel. That is my animal. Um, and from my list, I chose a persistent animal. So he's, he's a persistent weasel. Um, and then my playbook asks me to choose two your job asks you to be and two you actually are. Um, and my job asks me to be proper and calm. I am actually cheerful and trusting. Um, then I choose three to four to describe my look. Um, and I have chosen a finely tailored tie and a map of the local moth towers um, and a satchel full of papers and a deep sense that I am in over my head. <laughs> um, but I think that's okay. Like, I think that, I think that Edelweiss is okay, but he knows he's in over his head, but that's all right. We're going with the flow. Then I got to choose one that I would devote my life to protecting and one that's in danger of falling apart. So the one that I would devote my life to protecting is a sterling silver pin affixed to my vest that represents my oath to the moth tending organization. So that's really important to me, the promises that I've, I've made to, as a moth tender. And the one that is in danger of falling apart for me is a decoder for the secret moth tending cipher, an ancient relic gifted by your imaginative mentor. And I think it's falling apart because I, I don't remember the cipher very well. And it's part of why I'm in over my head. So I'm constantly flipping through the pages and it's getting really worn out. It was old when I got it. I choose three letters or packages that I'm carrying with me. And I have chosen a scroll of ancient and mysterious magic. Um, I have chosen a wax sealed love letter and I've chosen a basket of homemade candies. And for each of those, um, I get to choose where they're going also. Um, and whenever a package reaches its destination, then I choose another. And for these, the ancient um, and mysterious magical scroll is going to a heroic leader at the last outposts of the rebellion. My wax sealed love letter is for a relaxed old farmer with a big family. Um, and then the basket of homemade candies is for a cheerful young rabbit who moved to the big city. Probably a care package from their family. And then some things that I can always do are follow the moths, fidget, write something down on a piece of paper, Tell everyone what phase of the moon is in, what phase the moon is in right now. I can ask, have you heard the news? Um, and I can say, I have a letter for you. And they get a token if they accept. Uh, so those, those are all the things about, about Edelweiss as a moth tender. Um, so since we've each shared some things about our characters, now it's time for us to ask the questions. In our playbooks, each of us have a section that say, ask one to the left and one to the right. Um, but since we're playing virtually and there's just three of us, we'll just ask one question for each other person. Edelweiss, what mm -hmm. do you know about the world that I don't? I know that each of the moth towers um, each of the moth towers is also a shrine to a small and forgotten god. Awesome. More friends. Mm -hmm. And Evangeline, which of my small and forgotten gods did you 
did you rescue and give to me? Bravo, bravo <laughs> is who I gave to you. <laughs> Honey, why did I risk my job and career to help you? You risked your job and your career um, by protecting one of the moth towers um, that was housing a small and forgotten god and that's how you helped me rescue sunbeam oh do you think the moths are as beautiful as i do oh of course i do edelweiss i have a thing for small magical insects <laughs> and i think the moths are so beautiful and really like when you think about it also just like so people don't give them enough credit for all the things they can do. And they're keepers of the light too. They always flock to the light. And I love, I love small insects that like to flock to the light. Where do you wish I could guide you? And why can't I? Ooh. All right. So there's long been stories told about an old ancient God who might even be related to the one currently seeking uh, refuge with me. Um, but that ancient God is in a lost and dark place that even your firelight can't illuminate. And so part of my journey is figuring out how to rescue this, this ancient God. What did I show you that you didn't wish to see? Your, your light illuminates a lot more things in the dark than I'm used to seeing. Um, and I, I didn't, when I walked in the dark before, I didn't realize how many spiders lived in the trees before. But with your light, I saw that there were a lot of spiders in the trees at night. <laughs> and I didn't want to know. <laughs> It is time for us to create our first place together. So um, when we create our first place, um, we are gonna use natures and natures are a tool that help us voice the world around us. Just like the playbook, each of the natures has things that it can always do. And we'll also find some aesthetic elements to choose and folklore for the natures. So we can find all the natures on pages 136 through 185. Um, the book suggests that we start with three natures for our starting locations. And so let's um, pick them and go through the prompts together. Uh, there's some starting natures on the slides that we can use. I like the tavern because I'm always thinking about where I'm gonna eat next. <laughs> I mean, we're walking a lot and Matt needs some food, some sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to keep your light on that long. Mm -hmm. Glenn with its little buggy creatures and I thought they were very cute and there's lightning. Maybe a, um, a tavern and a Glen and um, let's see maybe a tower, like maybe the, the mark or the, the tavern is, is in a tower in a glen. I like that. So let's take a look. Uh, should we start with tavern? Tavern is a place of simple comfort, often settled into while on the journey from one land to the next. This place can always describe, oh, describe a small comfort. So confusion amongst the disoriented, Offer someone comfort and amenities at a price. Give them a token if they refuse your offer. Oh, oh, this tavern has some dark elements to it. <laughs> I was thinking of a nice place to rest our heads that possibly had some air conditioning and heat, friends, like a nice toasty fire. <laughs> and magically made anything we wanted. <laughs> well still have the aesthetic elements to decide so you may yep. get them yep okay choose so do we do this together or is this just yeah. me we, we can do it together okay 
So choose two aesthetic elements. Here are the elements, everyone. Dry places to sleep. Oh, huge fireplace with a big pot of stew. Barrels. Well, it has to be a good stew, though. I don't want this to be any stew that's like, you know, gross. Can we add in like good stew, Hal? Well, Is that allowed? We're, we're making it up. That? We're making it up. Oh, so okay. let's make it into existence. <laughs> Just want to make sure it's not like a gross like spoiled stew it can be a good stew a huge fireplace with a pot, big pot of the best stew you've ever tasted mm. barrels and barrels of mead oh great hall jam-packed with layabouts i don't know what that means a bar <laughs> rack with the secret identity mm. oh this is so curious a cheerful innkeep who you once called family. <gasps> Something else of your own invention. All right, friends. I'm going to mute myself so I can hear you. Let's talk about this aesthetic. Well, I feel like based on Evangeline and Matt with the side of Jenny, that the huge fireplace with the big pot of the best you you've ever had is like a must have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it's a magical stew. So what happens is whatever you want it to be, it turns into. Ooh. So say we find ourselves at the taverns at different mm -hmm. places on our journey, and maybe we're really warm and we want something like cold, like a gazpacho. It could be that. Or say like we want something really wonderful and filled with hearty vegetables and warm and toasty. It can be that. Could it be a chocolate stew, Jenny? Yes. No, because <laughs> wait, but oh, is no. honey allergic to chocolate? Shelly, you're allergic to chocolate, but is honey allergic to chocolate? So honey can probably have chocolate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, does it, it turn can... it does it turn into what you want it to be once you've gotten it in your bowl? Yeah, it could be cheese fondue without any allergies associated with it, like cheese in the summer. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm very curious about the bar rat with a secret mm. identity. That's mysterious. I like it too. Yeah. I like it too. Do we get to discover their secret identity? Is, can that be a part of our journey? It could I really be, yeah. like a mystery. I need to know. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, we'll find out. Yep. What is the bar rat's name as we know it? I mean, when I think of rat... I always think of Remy from Ratatouille. <laughs> I think Rodney from the uh, Helen Waddle book. No. Oh. <laughs> I like Remy though. Remy, Remy, Remy seems like a secret identity. Yeah, Remy seems like a great secret identity. I wonder if this rat's as good of a cook as Remy. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's okay. the one too. Mm -hmm. That could be true, yeah. Mm. Not Remy has magical stew powers. <laughs> All right, so now we moved on to the other parts. Those are our two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we mm -hmm. chose our two. Um, so just the last part of the okay. tavern. Okay, choose one folklore about this place. And here are our options. The night the old king drank here. Oh, the cat with the magic ale. That could be very interesting with our rat friend. How the old wombat outdrank the slobbering god and something else of your own invention. What are your thoughts, friends? I sort of like the night the old king drank here. Mm-hmm. I was between that and the cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could be part of the same story. Yes. If the, the cat served the old king magic ale. I like that. Oh, and that was the night the old king drank. Mm -hmm. But maybe the story, there are two different stories told from different perspectives. 
Like they're, they're different versions of the same story. Whose do we believe? Whose do we trust, the king or the cat? Ooh. A little bit of each, I think. Or maybe all of both. I'm very trusting. I trust, yeah. <laughs> I trust Remy. Okay, so the tower, the tower is a place that reaches so high up to the sky that it feels like it scrapes against the clouds. This place can always describe something very small and far away, spread concern around structural stability, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> make some dizzy, someone dizzy or disoriented and give them a token. Ooh. So describe or choose two aesthetic elements. So our choices I are- those. I don't like any of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get to choose between narrow, barely stable entrance uh, winding staircase all the way to the top, shining light, warning of danger, roosting moths in the rafters, uh, not enough space for all the clutter, a grieving soul responsible for keeping everything in working order, or something else of your own invention. Jenny, this is like a Nancy Drew tower. How do you not love it? I get really scared about Nancy Drew. You know that. I have to fast forward through most of that. I I like either the moths because obviously Edelweiss, mm -hmm. or I want to help this poor caretaker that that's very sad. I I feel like they need something. Those I are mean, my two books. It might be if if it's the the grieving soul that I mean that might be part of the rat and the mystery that the rat has to offer true and they might lead the way to the other god that we're looking for for honey mm. that's true um i also like the shining light warning of danger especially if it's warning about the danger of this like dark place that the light won't reach that might be somewhere in the near distance well can we have three we can do whatever we want I, I like that one too. The uh, the shining light was my favorite one too. Mm -hmm. So do we want to do the grieving soul and then the shining light? I think that sounds good. Okay. And then we choose one folklore about this place. Uh, the observatory of the lightning dancers. The first of the moth towers. The ghost that walks the stairs. Or something else of our own invention. No well, I called it the new tower. I kind of like the ghost walking the stairs. That does seem fitting. <laughs> if something haunts me tonight, Sally, I'm calling you at like three <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Fine. So then we just have the Glen. The Glen. All right. The Glen is a place overflowing with creatures and bugs alive with movement and presence, which is kind of a really fun balance to our sad, scary ghost tower. Um, this place can always describe a world teeming with life, show a conflict between wild creatures, and introduce a new buggy creature. Give someone a token if they engage with it as an equal. And we can choose two aesthetic elements. Our options are, you're gonna love these, Jenny, chittering mantises, cautious pill bugs, massive beetles, watchful caterpillars, soaring dragonflies, a feral and remarkable creature that no one has seen for hundreds of years, or something else of our own invention. Now a good time to mention that skunks eat bugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that happens. It's the circle of life. Yeah. Certainly not all of these are friendly creatures. I, I love the, um, the creature that nobody's seen. 
Right. I like that one too. It's feral. Mm -hmm. Right. I kind of wonder if it's going to um, connect with my my feral god. Ooh. And I also like the soaring dragonflies. I think that sounds really pretty and also, you know, beautiful, which is probably Mm -hmm. something that our grieving soul trying to keep everything together could use a reminder of. Mm-hmm. I love soaring dragonflies. They're pretty awesome. Do you agree, Evangeline? I do. I like the things we've chosen because some of the ones at the beginning were a little frightening for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did wonder. <laughs> I, then we've got our aesthetics and we're going to choose a folklore. The Meadow of the Lightning Dancers, The Last of the Monarch Butterflies, The Day the Woods Walked, or something else of our own invention. Ooh. I feel like the lightning dancers kind of fit the fireflies. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, lightning dancers are cool. What do you like, Hal? I also really like the lightning dancers. I like that one or the one about the woods walking. Yeah, I like the woods walking one too. It seems just creepy enough. Um, That's why I didn't like it. (laughs) We are going to have- I'm playing this game with two people that like spooky things. (laughs) Gosh, bless it. (laughs) Well, I like the idea of the Glen as a balance to the Mm -hmm. tower and even the tavern. So let's go with the Meadow of the Lightning Dancers. That sounds great. You can have creepy things walking too. You're allowed. You can have more than one. Do you want your creepy walkers? I mean, the day the woods walked could be, it could have been been like a joyful celebration of trees dancing. That's true. Yes. It doesn't have have to be scary. Kelly, were you thinking of it as a joyful celebration of trees dancing? Or were you thinking of it as some creepy Nancy Drew walkers? that were like (laughs) a little in between a little more on the spooky side but Mm not a yeah way but just sort of a curious like you know misty movement sort of thing yeah well we should put that in there because it intrigues you it does. Okay, so maybe the woods walked over to dance with the lightning. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, I think those are our three natures for this place that we're beginning. Um, but the world of hate also has its own seasons, months, and holidays. The month of till soil in the season of leap is the first month of the year but we can start in any month that we like. There are holidays between each season and each month and the holiday provides some helpful prompts to establish more about the world around you. So let's pick a month and follow the prompts. All right, so you all know that I am definitely like a snow person. So I really kind of love the idea of snow blanket, which I thought thought you might, (laughs) but also the monsoon season has like, tea is their like big thing I don't remember where I read that or learned that but I did and I was like oh we love tea Mm -hmm. tea so monsoon is kind of cool monsoon is cool yeah that's a great one might be a reason that we're at this tower tavern is that we're sheltering Mm -hmm. from the rain that's true that's a good time to warm up at a tavern a magical tavern. I do love heavy quilted blankets and tea. Shall we go with monsoon? Sounds good. Do you agree, Evangeline? Okay. Um, So I'll go through, I'll read the monsoon pages so we can follow those prompts. Um, So the description of monsoon, it's the second month of leap when the great rains come and bring water to the hay. So we have to choose one that this place lacks and the others are all present. So we are choosing 
between a torrential rain, brief moments of clear skies, beautifully green plant life, and brooding clouds. So we have to decide which one is not there. I vote torrential rain. <laughs> That's the one I vote for. <laughs> because I'm a skunk, I'm gonna like fly, I'll, I'll, I'll sweep right away. <laughs> I can't fly. <laughs> so maybe the rains are just in like patches instead of being constant torrential rain. Could be. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, so we've got brief moments of clear skies and beautifully green plant life and brooding clouds. So now we choose three to four signs of the month found in this place. And we are choosing dancing in the rain, mm -hmm. heavy quilt blankets, lots of tea, the clean smell of soil after the rain, jumping in giant puddles, enveloping mists, overflowing rivers, distinctive rain jackets, bored kids, a great sacrifice for the North Wind God, a dreary state of mind or something else of our own invention. To your blankets, to your blankets. We get to choose three, three to four. So we can have both of those things if we wanted. Well, I love tea and blankets. Mm -hmm. Me too. And I also love the clean smell of soil after the rain. That's such Petri a good one. Heart, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a good one. I think I like the idea of overflowing rivers mm. that perhaps we're stopped here because there is the rivers are overflowing and we, we can't cross right now. Yes. And I was thinking it seemed like a really good hydration opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it can be both of those things at once. <laughs> okay, so if we're good with those, then there's always something at the end of the month that's a special month thing. So every time monsoon rolls around, ask the table, do you seek shelter? Mark a raindrop for each person who says yes. Once eight raindrops are marked, that means there's the great flood phenomenon this year. So if we were to be playing this game for long term and we went through multiple calendar years in Haif, um, then each time we got to monsoon, we'd do this and keep checking off the raindrops that are relevant. All right, so then we just, we mark off three raindrops for this month. Very cool. We are not alone in the land of Haith. There are other kith living and wandering through their own lives. So let's make a kith who, that we will, who we'll encounter. Um, they could have been traveling with us, or it could be someone that we are meeting at this first location of this tower tavern in a glen. Um, but to, so to make a, a kith, we won't use a playbook. Instead, what we use are traits, uh, which are a lot like nature's, and they give us some choices about what our kith can always do. Um, and we'll find a list of all the traits on page 113. So we just need to choose two traits for our kith. Should we, should we do our rat barkeep? That sounds good to me. I think our rat barkeep is a good choice. I love that. Should we do our 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 grieving our grieving soul wandering the tower? Oh, I like or that. The walking or the walking woods, the walkers. I like our grieving soul. I think that was a great choice. Okay. So Remy and our grieving soul. And we, we can make both of them. Um, we pick two traits for each person that we make. But it seems like grieving is already one of them for one, perhaps. Mm. We know that Remy has a secret identity. So many faced might make sense. Oh, I like that. Oh, a shapeshifter. Remy's a shapeshifter. Remy could be. 
<laughs> oh, and Remy could be a trickster god. Maybe they know where your missing god is, honey. Maybe that's, they do. That's, that's true. They might. So the many-faced uh, trait, um, a many-faced kith is a shapeshifter who can adopt other forms. They're often trickster gods, sneaky thieves with a little bit of magic and skilled mimics among others. And we get to choose one to two things that they can always do between change dramatically and become something new, reveal another kith to have been them this whole time, look exactly like another character. If someone wants to spot the difference, they're going to need to spend a token. All of those sound real shifty to me. <laughs> I love I love the change dramatically and become something new, especially if maybe this Remy's secret identity is is a god. Oh yeah, I like that's the one I like the most. <laughs> I think it would be fun if I'm looking exactly like another character and that's how we figured out that something was up with their secret identity. Ooh, that sounds cool too. Yeah, I like that. So we've got one trait for Remy. We just have to pick one, either one that might suit Remy. I feel like Remy might be friendly and that's why they're so successful at everything. That's the same one I was looking at. Friendly sounds good to me too. Because there's got to be a way that Remy is able to get all these different faces. Like Remy needs to know who they are in order to really like pretend to be them because it's more than taking on their face. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, do you want to share the friendly description and things, Shelly? Yeah, a friendly kith gets along well with folk from all over. They are often innkeeps, barbers, and bards, among others. Choose one to two they can always do. Start up a conversation with someone else. Introduce someone to an old friend of yours. Get really attached to an inanimate object. You like the inanimate object one? I wonder what Remy is really attached to. I wonder if it's the magic stew pot, since he has a little- Ooh. No, Shelly, yes, it's the magic stew pot. It has to be. Gosh, if I had a magic stew pot like that, I would sleep with that thing. I would be like, I would carry it with me everywhere. <laughs> I feel like starting up a conversation with someone else is also something Remy can probably do since um, that's probably how Remy gets all these different identities. Absolutely, I totally agree. Should we figure out about our grieving ghost, our grieving, our grieving caretaker, and then wait—is this a ghost or a caretaker? It's a soul, right? Oh, like it's a soul. I think I interpreted ghost as soul as ghost, but I think the soul could be anybody. <laughs> True, I think I was too. I was too, but I, it can. It can and I was thinking of them as not a ghost. <laughs> they can be a ghost. That's fine. Do we even know if, first off, does this ghost, do they even, are they even able to communicate with us? We might not know their name yet. That's true. What if they can't talk to us? A grieving kith freshly mourns the loss of their love. They are often heartbroken parents, terrified exiles, and those promised greatness among others. Choose one to two. They they can always do. Overflow with emotion. That's when they go, oh. Hold tight to comfort and refuse to let go or ask, are you in a place to listen right now? Well, it sounds like um, our our ghost is not gonna ask if, if we're in a place mm -hmm. to listen because they're still hiding a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think, emotion or comfort? I like the hold tight to comfort and refuse to let go one. You too. And that ties really well to how they're trying to keep everything together. So clearly the yeah. tower is an important mm -hmm. place. For anyway. Should we pick, should we pick a, a, a second trait for the ghost to balance out the grieving? Yeah. yeah. Like watchful or learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked the watchful one too. I 
I like the watchful one too. That sounds nicer. I might not be as scared as this grieving ghost soul. I mean, it doesn't seem like they're trying to scare you. They're just trying to keep things together and maybe protect something. Yeah. Yet. They're yeah. not trying to scare me yet. <laughs> oh, we are in we are in the happy hate land and yes. the happy and things don't have to be scary. Yeah. That's the okay. joy. We're upbeat storytellers, remember? Yep, we said that at the beginning. <laughs> so if we're going to go with watchful, um, a watchful kith keeps a close eye on the world around them. They are often guards, astronomers, and scribes, among others. And we choose one to two things they can always do um, from point out something people missed, guard the exits, or ask, what's that you're hiding? I like pointing out something that people missed. Me too. It's really interesting is since our, our ghost isn't communicating verbally, mm -hmm. but clearly they are still involved and invested. Yeah, I think that one makes a lot of sense too. What are, what are you doing, Miss Jenny? This is the ghost, I'm the ghost. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pointing. Then we have chosen our first location and shared our playbooks and we have made some kith who we will interact with so we now just get to answer the final four questions um, before we embark there are three that we ask together and one that we ask and we we answer just silently in our heads um, so the first question is what sort of place did we just travel from? What if we were rescuing one of Honey's gods? Oh. Hmm. Because that seems to be a part of our journey is finding the different gods. Yeah. For our caretaker. I like that. Maybe we were at the tower that maybe that's where we just came from was that tower that, that had the, um, the god that... Mm. was in it yes the next question is do we feel our journey has been long maybe not like years together mm -hmm. but we've seen a season or two yeah that sounds good to me and then is there somewhere we hope to go sounds like maybe maybe that's where we're, we're heading um toward this, this place with this God that is in the dark. Our missing God that's in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think Edelweiss is always hoping to go places where he can deliver more letters. Absolutely. We're stopping at many moth towers along the way. Yes. Cool. And then Angeline has some guilt that she hasn't been able to help find this god. Cool. Then we just have to spend a quiet moment and answer this last question, which is, where is my home? I think I've got my answer. I do too. Cool. Yeah. And so now we would just embark on our journey. Um, and uh, we would go about asking each other questions about what we're doing and who we're talking to and uh, exploring each piece together and speaking it into the world. Um, so thank you for joining us for our character creation and the beginning of our first adventure. Um, you should check out the Wander Home uh, Discovery Kit. Um, if you're journeying, you can journey with friends or you can also journey on your own too. Um, if you just want to create your own story and there are tools in the kit for you to do that, like a deck of tarot cards that you can use to help prompt your journey. And that's something we could use together too as we're creating our, our journey is we could, if we feel stuck or not sure what to do next, we can draw a card and um, think about how it might inspire where we go.